Good morning, everyone. This is Barb Miller Webb, and uh, welcome to 3D uh, Systems Next Technology. Um, again, this is all part of the manufacturing the future. This is going to be a 20 minute educational webinar um, that we're going to talk about selective laser centering. And um, obviously, as everyone probably knows, the T3 technologies represents 3D systems in additive manufacturing technologies. In addition to that, of course, we've also got um, the solutions and services for the Autodesk products as well. Um, just one, one thing I really would like to make note to everyone, 3D systems, um, actually, uh, we selected them simply because they have the widest range of technology, print technologies out there today. And so that's the main reason. Um, the whole purpose of this webinar today is really to help you understand the various 3D technologies. And so today we're going to be covering, of course, selective laser centering, or I'm going to refer to it as SLS frequently, um, how the process works, number one, what materials are available through selective laser centering, what types of applications you might want to use for selective centering, uh, some case studies, um, or examples of customers that are using it. And lastly, um, I'm going to have a question and answer session so that we can uh, ask and, and answer any questions that you might have. Before we get started, though, I would like to go ahead and just start out with just one poll question, if I could, today. And that question is, do you have a 3D printer in-house today? So I'm going to give everyone about 30 seconds to, uh, to help answer this. Okay. All right. Let's go ahead and let's get started. So um, the first thing, as I said, that I want to do is I want to kind of take you through um, a little bit about how technology works. And I'm going to start out um, with a video today. It actually shows you a little bit about that process. So some of it's a little dry, and I apologize for that, but I think it really helps you understand exactly how the process works, and I'm happy to highlight some of those things as well. And as you guys might notice, there's a lot of videos out on YouTube, and this is exactly where I'm pulling this from today.
Okay. Um, curious, did anyone hear any of that presentation? So if you guys can maybe just kind of uh, send up something in your chat box so that I can see what it is. No, did not hear anything at all. Okay, that's interesting. Okay, well, what I uh, will probably do is I will send this YouTube to you just so that you guys um, can hear it. And what I'm going to do is I wanted you to just kind of see what the basic process was, but I'm going to go through and also try to uh, explain it to you, explain exactly what they, what they were showing. So basically what they were talking about is they were talking about um, the point of taking your STL file because this, this technology works just like all the other technologies do in that you're going to export your STL file out of your CAD file and that is going to come into my software that comes with the Selective Laser Centering Printer and that actually allows you to it slices it one slice at a time. And so it's going to lay down a bed of powder, as, as he was showing you there. It's going to lay a bed of powder anywhere from 0.1 micron to um, 15 microns layer thickness. And then it will use a high-powered CO2 laser for actually centering that process or centering that part comes back, does another roll of layer powder, and continues that process. So the chamber actually drops by just that much of layer thickness to be able to add another layer of powder to it. Then when you're basically done, as it completes the parts, and by the way, you can do multiple parts. As you see here in this diagram in the setup software, I can place multiple parts, my STL file, multiples of them, stacking them, nesting them into this technology. Um, and the nice thing about it, it, the support structure happens to be the loose powder. So that's the beauty of this technology. And the other nice piece of this is, is if it's actually started printing, you can add parts. If there's more room on top of the build chamber, um, on top of the parts that you've got before you get to the very top of the build chamber, you can add parts at any time during this whole prints process. So um, it really does provide you with a, an effective technology. Um, so once you are done, and by the way, that software, it allows you to measure inner dimensions, scale, and it's kind of got a scale and offset wizard. So it's got a lot of user-friendly software, as all 3D printers have pretty user-friendly software packages. Again, as I talked about, you can maximize. It doesn't have to be one type of part. You may have 15 different types of parts. In this example, this happens to be 62 models that are actually packed into one single tray of, uh, of one of our smallest printers, which happens to be our S-Pro 60 selective laser-centered uh, printer. So once it's completed the print process, as I, as I explained to you, then you've got um, the breakout uh, process. So, and, and I think you saw in that he had a large plastic container. So all of that powder is then moved over to another area where you actually remove that, the centered parts or the solidified parts from that chamber and clean them. So the, the parts are actually surrounded by what they call cake powder. And um, removing those parts is really, it's called breakout. So once you remove the part from the cake, from the selective laser centered, then um, you start simply cleaning those off. Typically, what most people do is they will use a brush or um, they could use some other tools, but a brush to brush off the excess powder. Um, and then a lot of times, once you've done that, then most people actually take it and just bead blast it and you're done with the part. It's very simple. There's nothing else. There's no physical removing of parts, which is perfect because you don't have any of those support scars to worry about. Um, some people also put it into what we call a tumbler 
so the tumbler is fast and it can polish parts, many parts at one time. So there's really, you know, no real machine time involved in that. Um, so that's another way that you do some post-processing with pulling those out. Now, to add to that, all of that material that's not solidified or centered is actually material that can be placed back into the unit and reused. So about 80% of the material can be recycled and, and reused back into it if it's not centered already. That's a little bit about kind of the process of how it works. It's a very easy process. Um, again, very friendly from a standpoint of there's virtually no post-processing other than removing the, the um, leftover powder the, and then sometimes doing a bead blast on it, and that's it. You're done with your parts. So this is some of the materials. I told you that I wanted to talk about some of the materials that are available with selective laser centering, um, and there certainly is going to be more coming down the pipe. But typically, um, most people use what we call the Duraform PA or polyaminide, uh, which is more of a thermoplastic nylon. It's really the most common, and, it, and most of it's just because it's got really good um, mechanical properties, um, and, and certainly it's very durable. So most people use that. However, there's also Duraform GF or glass filled. Um, and so that's, again, it's a nylon, but it, but it does contain glass beads, and it, and it really helps with uh, temperature resistance. Um, so that's another um, area. This, uh, just so you know, glass build also has a little bit lower um, strength capability than your Duraform PA. Duraform EX is what we call the impact resistance, or it's really tough material. Provides great elongation of break um, as compared to injection molded parts. Um, so it's, it's really suitable for good end use parts. A lot of people use this for um, hinges, things of that nature. Then you've also got Duraform Flex. So Flex is, again, it, it's like a more of a uh, elastomeric it's got a little flexibility to us, so it offers a uh, shore A hardness from about 45 to 80, uh, depending on some of the various processing conditions. Then you've also got Duraform HST. That's more of an advanced uh, fiber reinforced composite material. Again, it's really great for temperature resistance um, and things of that nature. And lastly, uh, we have a cast form PS. That produces a um, wax casting pattern for your investment casting processes um, and, and really takes the place of your traditional wax model. So if you're trying to do some short run productions, it's, it's really um, a perfect application for that. So what I'm trying to point out here is all of the materials from selective laser centering are really used for end use products. I mean, a lot of people do use it for certainly some prototyping, certainly a lot of testing, but the whole point is here is it is it's in use. And the fact that you uh, really can put that in us. Why do top designers most focus most exclusively on selective laser centering? Well, well, as I indicated, parts don't break. You know, they're fully production plastic parts. They're fully functional, and they've got a long life cycle. This example right here happens to be a part that's used in a lot of aerospace technologies. It's, it's a, um, uh, sometimes used in some of their uh, filtration areas. But the nice thing about these parts, and I'm telling you that I've had people over and over, and I've got parts that I've had for a long time. They've got parts that have been out in the elements, and they still have the same mechanical properties that they did the first day that they were printed. Now, not to say they may not color, you know, discolor a little bit when they're out in the elements or if you've had them in certain situations, but they will still have the same mechanical fully used functional part. The reason? There really is minimal environmental influences. 
So they're stable. They don't stay, you know, they really don't change over time other than maybe discolorations. Um, sun really doesn't affect the property. So you can have a temperature of these products uh, anywhere from negative 40 C to 185 C. Um, so if you look here, you know, you take a look and see that a lot of selective laser centering is used in manufacturers today for prosthetic parts, for end use parts, for auto, auto space, or excuse me, aerospace and automotive type applications, for medical industries, which we're going to talk about again a little bit. Selective laser center. I want you to take a look at this because this is another key reason why so many companies use this technology. It's got reliable, repeatable printing with features down to 0.155 inches in terms of fine feature detail. And it's also got really smooth surfaces. You recall I told you that when the parts are being printed, it's actually using the surrounding powder as a support material. So there is no support material, and there's virtually no support material or no waste in material because about 80% of it is recycled back in. And it also has an automatic um, material handling process where you can actually, uh, it, it recycles, brings all that material that is left over that's not centered or solidified, pulls it back into the unit to be reused for the next print. So really the other piece that you're going to find with this is, as I said, it's part consistency, part repeatability. Um, you know, again, material temperatures are controlled to a half a degree at set point. And so those mechanical properties are really going to be consistent, um, you know, machine to machine or print to print. Any, any type of orientation. It doesn't matter how you orient it on the build paper. Just to give you a little bit more detail on some of the machine throughput itself, um, as I said, it's gonna, it uses a CO2 laser. So that scans at about 12.7 um, um, seconds or 500 IPS. Um, it does utilize a 100 watt CO2 laser. Uh, typically, your print throughput is gonna be plus or minus um, about two liters an hour. So your typical print on Z height is going to be about a half an inch per hour. Now sometimes that can vary depending on your orientation. I've had some parts that I've been able to get up to almost an inch an hour on the Z height. So again, some of that depends upon your orientation of the part itself. And again, it utilizes a layer thickness of uh, four thousandths of an inch in layer thickness. So again, are some of the selective laser center production printer applications. Rapid tooling, big process for rapid tooling. Do, being able to do custom tooling. Medical, you're going to be, see that there's actually um, some biocompatible materials there, as well as being able to do prototypes or pre-production or production parts themselves because they're really tough functional thermoplastic parts. Just one example, Northrop Grumman, who's actually using this technology today, selective laser centering, for rapid tooling. And uh, the reason that they're using it is uh, they were able to uh, have about a 92% cost reduction um, and 40% savings in some of their labor. So as opposed to their people to going out and doing it the traditional way with your CNC equipment, it's really saved them on that. In addition to some reduction in their defects that they were having out there. So if you look at that savings right there, 278,000, I can just tell you right now that that's gonna pay uh, for a good portion of that machine, depending upon the size of selective laser center machine that you get. ROI is a quick ROI with it. Some tooling. Another example of where um, a lot of people are using selective laser centering today. This is another example with the traditional method or conventional method. Uh, they were welding fixtures, aluminum plates. It was taking about three to four weeks at about $1,500 a fixture. Whereas with your direct additive manufacturing, we were using the door form glass filled material. Lead time was two to three days 
and the cost was about three hundred dollars per fixture. So you know, from custom tooling, that's a huge savings. Not only in time is it a huge savings, like down to less than um, a quarter, but also uh, less than a quarter on the expense of the tooling itself. And here's just another example of custom tooling. This is Cheetah Tool. Cheetah Tool it was a startup company, just to kind of give you a little bit of background on this company. And typically, uh, for him, he was having the machine parts that were $60 to about $250 a part. And many the times, they really didn't get it first, uh, right the first time. So they went out looking for a lightweight material options, something that had faster results, you know, were able to do some design freedom, have some part consolidation. And so they started looking at 3D printing. Today, what they're doing is 25% of their production hand tool is manufactured in our Duraforum plastic material, um, which really talks to the uh, good mechanical properties that you get, um, elevated temperature resistance and smooth surface So Not only were the parts accurate, but they were also machinable and certainly paintable. You, know, you can paint, you can place these parts when they're done. And then they really had some good chemical resistance. So today, with this technology, they really were able to save millions of dollars with their intricate parts that they that they really could not have done uh, with a rigorous tool in the past. So again, just another good example of how people are using it for custom tooling. That's another example, bullet nozzle in the conventional way, of course it was around nozzle, it really didn't dissipate heat. And it had stress finished parts. Whereas with additive manufacturing, it really could handle the cooling, um, so it evenly uh, cooled those parts. And of course, there was a lot of less scrap that was involved with that, right? Something if you take it from the medical, again, not knowing you know who's on and who's got what type of industry, but um, bespoke innovations uh, actually it manufactures uh, helps people to manufacture custom prosthetic devices. So really what they're doing here is they're scanning um, an individual's body part with either using CT or MRI scans. And from that, they're able to take that and convert that into the appropriate file and help to design or develop, uh, actually it creates it into a CAD file and then helps design the 3D printed a prosthetic part because this truly is now an end use part and being used and it allows you to, to mass customize that's the nice thing about it you're really personalizing some of this uh, print technology to the individual's character this is another example just another case study where they were producing custom manufactured uh, medical devices uh, that that's used for um, surgery applications Again, another medical. These parts are actually sterilized by either, um, you can sterilize the selective laser center parts, the radiation, the autoclave, or sometimes chemically. Um, so this is just another example of how they were able to do a direct end-use production part for uh, cleft lip cases. Functional prototypes, just another area of where they're using selective laser centering today. So this is an example of, of actually a car seat, of course. And the one thing that you're going to know here, if you take a look at those two graphs, they actually compared in a production using their traditional method of producing the car seat versus on the right, that's a selective laser centered um, seat. And the data was ex almost exactly the same. When they actually reproduced it, actually put it through a test crash, if you will, and it was almost identical. If you look at these charts, you can see that they're almost identical. So again, functional prototype saves them a lot of money, saves them a lot of time being able to print those 3D printed parts and selective laser centered technology. Physical mock-up, again, in this example, this happens to be um, being able to personalize their own footwear. So a lot of um, elite athletes really want to have their own type of footwear. So they're using 3D printed 
um, applications hookups. This is an example of a company that really is manufacturing end-use parts. Previously, when they were doing it their traditional way, they had 15 parts, about five SKUs. They had to use three custom tools and did, did about 10 assembly checks. Now, it's all 3D printed in that one part that's in the left-hand corner, but it's 3D printed and it's only one part. It's one SKU, no custom tools, and no assembly checks because there's nothing to assemble. So it saved this company thousands of dollars by being able to do that, not only in time, but also in, uh, in some of their assembly and, and uh, traditional CNC manufacturing. This is another example in the Formula One uh, automotive. They're using our selective laser centering for air ducts. Uh, in use and the main reason is because it's smooth and the mechanical properties are there so there's no support structure and it really allows them to have that as I like to call it um, uh, non-complex way of or freedom of creation for for designing a part and getting better performance out of that air duct this is another uh, direct end-use manufacturer, again, air ducts. A lot of air ducts are being used in aerospace today um, just because of the fact that it's faster, it's easier, it's less expensive. So in this example as shown above, they actually have defog ducts as part of their environmental control system. So there's about 32 um, EX or Duraform EX material parts that are actually used on the aircraft. You know, the other thing I like to tell people is you can do direct digital manufacturing. And I do tell people that if you're doing low batch, low batch volumes of manufacturing, selective laser centering is the way to go. There's no question. Now, if you're going to do high volume, then your traditional way makes more sense. In this case, this is 200 brackets that were fabricated into one build. And uh, again, huge time savings and huge money savings. I just want to run this because this is how General Motors uses our selective laser centering technology today, so I want you to be able to see this. I understand that some of you can't hear that, so I'm going to send that uh, video out to you as well just so that you can hear it and, and have a better understanding of what it is. What I'd like to do is have one more poll question, but then I'd like to have a question and answer, so you're welcome to type in the chat section any questions that you might have on what selective laser centering is or does or any, any uh, questions. But the first poll question, if you can just give me 15 seconds. Uh, do you want to be contacted to discuss a 3D printing technology? So I'll give everyone about 15 seconds to answer that.
Okay. Um, what I'd like to do is just open this up for any Q&A. I realize that um, I can't hear you, but if you want to type something into the chat section and I can certainly answer it for you. Are there any other any questions? Thing that anyone wants to answer? Okay. Well, then um, at this time, I think that's all that there is, and we certainly appreciate you being on board for this 20-minute um, selective laser centering. If you have any questions, feel free to give me. Um, a call or shoot me an email and I'll be happy to help you. Thanks so much and have a great day.